Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. And thanks for your patience on the Facebook group. We had some kind of orchestrated attack happen on the Facebook group. And uh, they, there were a bunch of adult posts that were put on there. So I apologize that you guys had to see that. This is the world we live in now where Facebook has no problem immediately identifying anything that they consider misinformation and reporting those posts and putting the group basically at the bottom of the list when it comes to your feed. But when it comes to outright spam and adult content, it's like they look the other way. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? So... What I've had to do in the Facebook group, and I didn't want to have to do this because it's annoying when you go to join a group and they start asking you questions and then you have to wait to get approved to get in the group. But that's what we're going to have to do. So I changed the parameters. I finally figured out how to do that to be able to basically set it up so that you, I have to approve every single person that comes in the group. And this is how they limit the size of groups on Facebook. They limit it by, you know, I have to go through hundreds and hundreds of these approvals per day, which is more of my time that I don't have. You know, people think that YouTube is such an easy thing to do in managing these social media accounts, and it's really actually pretty difficult. It requires full-time attention, managing all these different platforms. And I'm not complaining because this is a labor of love, but there's a lot more that goes into it than you can imagine. And this is one of the things, you know, another issue with the Facebook group. Now, I've considered shutting down the Facebook group, but I won't do that because there are people there that need to be reached. Um, and that's something we need to talk about because Jesus came to save the sinners, didn't he? Yes, he did. And Jesus addressed the critics, didn't he? Yes, he did. The Pharisees were calling Jesus out and he addressed the critics. So those are a couple things. You know, I've heard some chatter. Um, people are like, your channel's not growing because you only address the critics. Well, first of all, that's not true. We address everybody. In fact, 90% of the material on this channel comes from the comment section, the chat, and everything else. And of course, the Holy Spirit. So we don't just address the critics, but as Jesus did, we have to also address the critics of what's going on. So that's what's going on. It's a quick update on the social media platforms. So again, I apologize if you guys had to see that. It was pretty disgusting. And they wouldn't even let you report the post. That was the crazy thing. Like it took a minute for you guys to get my attention that there was something going on over there. And apparently you can't even report the post. So... We took care of it, hopefully, um, but the group's now going to probably grow a lot slower because I don't have the time to approve all of those. Now, if you are on the Facebook group, and now this isn't just for anybody. This is someone who has the time, and you want to be like a moderator over there to help me approve people to get in the group. Um, and I, and I, the prerequisite here is that I have to know you to some degree, like some level of trust. So I run into that too where people volunteer that I didn't know very well and then got our group in trouble and got it almost taken down because if you're an admin and you approve certain things, it's like double trouble on Facebook. Basically, they'll take they'll delete your group if an admin does something. So that happened once. So I have to kind of know you and then we have to you have to be, you know, a person that I can trust um, that can actually do that and that would help me out a lot. Okay, so Rachel says she can help. So, Rachel, hit me up on Facebook, I guess, Messenger or whatever. And uh, I've known Rachel for a long time, so that's cool. She's been coming to the channel for a long time. And I'll tell you kind of what I'm looking for and what we need to watch out for. Unfortunately, in the Facebook group, we have to pull down fact-checked comments and posts. We just have to. And you can call that censorship, but what happens is... When you leave that stuff up there, Facebook basically disappears your entire group. Nobody gets it in their feet. So you just have to find a different way to post it. And I'll explain all that to Rachel when she uh, messages me on Messenger so that we can talk about how we're going to run the group. All right. So 
the world is coming unglued. If you haven't figured it out by now, then you guys know I'm not one to ring alarm bells. Although we are not supposed to be fans of this world, we're just really not. According to the New Testament, this world belongs to the devil. And apparently there's a lot of Christians that are still holding on to the concept that this world can be fixed and that it's not run by the devil and everything's wine and roses and we're supposed to be happy and just praising God all the time and not considering all of the dysfunction around us, all of the things falling apart right before our eyes and continuing to allow believers to walk right into the devil's traps, which is just happening all around us every single day. And until you actually face face off the enemy and really understand what he's doing and how he really does control this world and everything in it, then you're going to continue to fall for his traps. People wonder why their life's in chaos, why they have so many challenges in their life sometimes. And this isn't always the case, obviously. But much of the time, the Bible says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Why do you think the Bible says that? It says that because people continually keep walking into the devil's traps. So if you're one of those Christians who doesn't want to face the music, so to speak, then you're going to continue to walk into the devil's traps. So there's a certain personal responsibility, isn't there, to understand what's going on in this world. Now, what are we going to get into today? Well, there's some crazy stories. We're going to cover roadside ambushes. We're going to also cover some places on earth that are actually turning into deserts. The desertification of earth. Some places becoming much wetter, but other places turning into the desert. Now we've heard of this happening throughout history, haven't we? I mean, look at the Sahara Desert. It used to be a lush rainforest. And we'll get into all of that. But we also are going to talk about the snowshoe crab almost disappearing from Alaska. And this is startling because there have typically been in abundance for decades and decades and decades. So things are getting really weird, aren't they? Now let's get started on this first story about this roadside ambush. Now this was shocking to me. I was digging into this. A woman named Yasmin Hyder, go figure, Hyder, really, was hiding in the bushes and basically ambushed this couple. Well, she was hiding in the woods. And she basically pretended that she was stranded on the side of the road. And this is a story out of the Miami Herald here. And this nice couple stopped to see if they could be of some assistance. And the woman pulled out a gun and started blasting. Open fire. Now, the guy returned fire. This is the guy here, him and his girlfriend. I think, I don't know if it was his fiance or his wife. But this is what happened. Adam Simji and his, let's see, oh, it's, it was his girlfriend. Now, we're going to read the details of this. But here's what bothers me about this article. Look at this. Here's the story. Miami Herald. You see the victims. Uh, where's the perpetrator? Where's the lady that shot them? She's not in here. Now, I've noticed this pattern of social engineering. When they have an agenda afoot and they're trying to make one race look better than the other or trying to embolden a race synthetically unnaturally over another race for their agenda they will leave out race the race of the people that are doing some of these things now this goes both ways but here's what i'm noticing i'm noticing the demonization of the white race and elevation of the black race now, I can say this because I am a black man, and even I notice this. This is crazy. Now, look at this. These are all the mainstream. All I did was type in robbery, shooting, Simji, Alabama, which is where this occurred. 
And look at this. The main stories up here, People, Fox News, The Guardian, none of them include the picture of the lady who actually did this. But this is the lady here. Now, what would be the reason behind this? Well, obviously there is an agenda afoot. And the black race is being used right now for that agenda, are they not? We already saw it happen several summers ago. They are being used. And this breaks my heart that my own people are being used for this agenda that they're doing. They're letting us get away with a lot of stuff. And the end goal is to create anger towards the black race. This is how we're being used. And if you haven't figured that out by now, if you think that the, that the powers that be are just going to allow us to run in and smash and grab and steal a bunch of Nikes with no consequences, you're sadly mistaken. Nothing is free. If you think that the powers that be are going to simply let us go in and burn down entire cities, then you've got another thing coming. We're being used. That's the truth of the matter. Now, some of my brothers and sisters don't want to accept that fact, and that's okay. But this is what's going on. This is the lady who did it. She's even wearing a melanin t-shirt. But the mainstream media has not done their due responsibility. I don't know if they're afraid of being called a racist. I don't know what the deal is here. But this is what happened to these two people. Now let's get into this story. Now that we got past some of, you know, the psyop behind all this stuff. Woman fakes being stranded and then kills Florida college student who stopped, Alabama cops say. Roadside robber masquerading as a stranded motorist killed a University of Central Florida student when he fought back. So there was like a shootout. 22-year-old victim was identified as Adam of Apopka, Florida. He was traveling with his girlfriend, Michaela, who witnessed the killing. It happened around 11.30 a.m., Sunday, August 14th, as a couple were driving through Talladega National Forest. Be very careful wherever you go. I, I guess the moral of the story is even if even if you have protection with you, don't stop for strangers. Don't stop for strangers. It could be a setup. The two, the two were flagged down by a woman, later identified as Yasmin Hyder, hiding in the forest. Asked the couple if they could give her some assistance to get her car started, which was nearby. Think about how sick this is. When the couple attempted to assist Hyder, she produced a gun and made the couple walk back into the woods. Imagine the terror. The person you're trying to help pulls a gun on you. And walks you back into the woods. You have no idea what's going to happen next. You have no idea if there's other people hiding back there. This guy probably feared for his life. Feared for his girlfriend's life. Once they were in the woods. SMG revealed he was armed. And the two exchanged gunfire. Both SMG and Hyder were struck by gun gunfire. Michaela noticed a second woman. Later identified as Crystal. Standing in the woods nearby. Observing what was going on. She might have been in on it too. Oh, okay, so yeah, the shooter then called out to Pinkins to come help her. After a brief conversation between the suspects, Pinkins fled the scene on foot. Michaela was able to retrieve her cell phone and call 911. So the boyfriend died on the scene. In his girlfriend's arms, several gunshots. Oh, apparently uh, deputies arrived to find Hyder on the ground nearby with several gunshots to her torso. She's still alive. But think of the horror. Then, wow, there's more. Pinkins was arrested hours later, standing among a group of tents half mile from the scene of the robbery. As officials ordered Pinkins to the ground, a five-year-old child ran from the woods holding a loaded shotgun. Now understand that the way some of these people are behaving is because of the program. Emboldened by the media. To act like this. Uh, you know, I get on to the Facebook watch and you see like people coming at police even. They've been emboldened by the media. There have been no consequences or no media outrage for the way people are behaving. And so therefore, it's almost like training a pit bull to tear something apart. 
Of course the pit bull is going to keep tearing stuff apart if you raise it that way. And this is what has happened. Sadly, as we have been used by both the right and the left, both sides are responsible for this. And it's created a situation that's very volatile at this point. Now, hopefully people out there understand that not all people of color act this way. That's not the point I'm trying to make here. But it's programming. It's the same programming that causes, for instance, people to choose a certain gender, for instance, based on the programming that the elite are pushing from the top down onto our children. It's the same thing, just a different topic. Law enforcement told the child to put the shotgun down. There was a child with a shotgun. However, the child continued to the female's location before laying the gun on the ground. The child was Pinkin's son. She was arrested and charged with endangering the welfare of a child. It did not appear that any other people were currently using the camp. Ider faced charges of one count of murder, two counts of kidnapping, two counts of robbery. This is a sad story. This is why I tell you guys, don't buy in to the program. If you start buying into their programming and what they're telling you, the way things are, you will have rage inside of you. You will start acting a fool. And this is what they want. Because then you play right into their chaos. Wow. So... The, the girlfriend says, I had to watch as my reason for being my soulmate, my life partner, the future father of my children, died in the middle of a state park in Alabama. No words can begin to describe the shock and pain I'm in. We had our entire lives ahead of us. Wow. So, welcome to the selective media reporting. Stuff makes me so mad. Let me go back into the chat and see what your guys' thoughts are on this. Now, let's see what you guys are up to in here. And then we'll get into some of these other stories. Let this catch up a little bit. Now, in this case, the personal protection didn't do a whole lot for this guy, did it? I mean, I guess it saved his girlfriend's life. She could have been killed, too. Then some might argue, oh, well... Maybe it's, this is about, you know, maybe if there was no aggression, they would have just taken their money and, and left. But, you know, when someone pulls a gun, that's pretty much, it's it. You got to defend yourself at that point. So, <clears throat> what else is going on here? Now, we're going to talk next about Spanish Stonehenge. Now, many of you have probably already heard about this. Spanish Stonehenge had resurfaced. After half a century of being underneath a lake. And this is crazy. Because. Different parts of the earth. Different regions of the earth. Are starting to go. And turn into deserts. Now. I, when I first saw the story. I was like. Okay I'm going to start decoding these stones. Then I quickly realized. That the story isn't about the stones. The story is about things drying up and becoming like deserts. Just like what's happening with Lake Mead and many other places around the planet. Deserts are emerging in places where they weren't before. Now, this just isn't just at Lake Mead and just in Spain. I follow a fishing guy from Italy and he fishes the Po River. It's almost dry. And they're having record drought. And look at this. Rivers across Europe seem to be drying up. Eerie photos show how underwater artifacts are resurfacing in Europe as water levels drop because of drought. Look at this. The Netherlands, the Wall River, is so low it has fallen below the bottom marker on bridges and that's a dangerous situation because when that happens basically what you're dealing with is the bridge now becomes unstable believe it or not bridges rely 
on some amount of water around them to keep them stable. In Germany, the Rhine River is so dried up it's causing shipping problems. And then of course the reservoir in Spain. Now here's what happens. As soon as the supply chain starts basically coming under threat, which is exactly what we saw during the pandemic, now add in shipping problems. You can't get in and out of these ports because the water's too low. Now they have ways to remedy this. They'll go in and dredge and things like this but it gets to a certain point where the ships can't even get in elsewhere in Europe so-called hunger stones are appearing in rivers once more markers placed by people in droughts from years past it's not uncommon for water levels to drop in the summer months but this year is particularly extreme That's what they're saying here Let's look at some of these stories here. The drought in Europe is unveiling cautionary hunger stones. When you see me weep, it says. This is what they're talking about. They've got these messages on these rocks. Saying, hey, it's getting close to the end here. This is crazy. Hunger stones. Kind of like sounds like uh, Hunger Games, doesn't it? Here's some more of these stones. I'd never heard of these before, but apparently, wow, Elbe River from 1616, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. If you see me cry, it says, the dire markings should come as no surprise, but seeing the water levels go down, giving way to centuries old warnings is not exactly reassuring. So these people are up to something. Look at this. Look at this river just dried up. Now, don't think for a minute that this has to do with what they're saying it has to do with. I don't believe in what they're saying about the climate. This is something else. It's like a reshifting, a restructuring of dry areas of the earth and wet areas of the earth. Because in the same way we're seeing this, we're also seeing other areas that were typically not so wet becoming very, very much more wet, aren't we? And look at this. Here's a map showing the river discharge across the earth. This looks like Europe. And as you can see here, this is color coded 75% in dark blue, down to negative 75% in red. So it looks like most of the rivers across Europe are just not flowing the way they used to. Some are flowing a lot more. Looks like up in, uh, what is that, Norway? Iceland. They're getting a lot of river flow up there. It's almost like the northern areas near the Arctic Circle are getting much more rain. Now here's what's crazy. Does this have something to do with a pole shift? I mean, think about this for a second. Even looking at a map of the United States... All the northern regions of the U.S. are getting plenty of rainfall. No drought up there. But then when you drop down into the south, like for instance here in Arkansas, they're saying we're in a drought. And so it's almost like the northern areas are getting the rain, which would suggest some kind of pole shift, wouldn't it? I don't know what the word is on pole shifts lately. I haven't followed those in quite some time. I'm sure there's a lot of channels talking about pole shifts at this, at this point that know what they're talking more about a lot more than we do but this is interesting nonetheless now several of you had also mentioned the Euphrates River drying up and that's something we probably need to talk about this would be in fulfillment of biblical prophecy and you're right it appears as though Iraq's Garden of Eden is now like a desert now if you're new to the channel, we're not the ones to date, set, or cry wolf when it comes to the condition of the world. And I don't believe that this is about the entire planet warming. I think this is just certain regions, like I said, getting wetter or getting drier. And, of course, we've seen this happen throughout history. You know, some of these desert areas have a lot of fossils of much wetter climate. 
trees and all these places were all once full of lush trees and rainforests that have turned to desert. So there's some kind of flip-flopping going on here. Let's read about the Euphrates River Valley in Iraq. It says to feed and cool his buffaloes, Hashim Gassed must cross 10 kilometers of sunburnt land in southern Iraq, where drought is devastating swaths of the mythical Mesopotamian marshes. Peter home of the biblical Garden of Eden, Iraq swampland have been battered by three years of drought, low rainfall, as well as reduced water flows along rivers and tributaries. The vast expanses of the once lush Wazai marshes, marshes sorry, straddling the border with Iran have been baked dry, their vegetation yellowing. So the marshes are drying up. Unbelievable. Now, this next story is alarming because it hasn't happened in half a century. These snow crabs are going, not extinct, but they've had the lowest catch in half a century. Now, let's get into this and read about these snow crabs. I think I call them snowshoe crabs, but they're actually just snow crabs. Now, I've never been an advocate of commercial fishing. Or, let's put it this way. The dominance of commercial fishing over the rights of the individual day-to-day -day fisherman who catches food for the table. I'd rather catch my own fish with fewer rules than to buy it in a store where already by the time you see it in a store, 20 to 30% of those fish have been wasted because no one ever buys all the fish. Everybody wants fresh fish. So the, all the fish sitting in there that aren't bought get thrown in the garbage. Anyway, we've all seen the Deadliest Catch TV series, haven't we? Millions and millions of pounds of these snow crabs pulled out of the ocean. And of course they want to blame climate change for this too, for the dwindling numbers. That's the, so they can enact their climate agenda. But basically what this story says is millions of dollars are spent hedging contracts for future catches. Now I didn't know that this is what they did, but apparently they do. This article talks about some kind of $4 million deal. They were hedging the catch, basically. Took out loans about $4 million in rights to harvest a huge number of crabs. It was a year that many young commercial fishers in the Bering Sea bought into the fishery, going from deckhands to owners. But then what happened is the projected catch was down 90%. In fact, they had to change the amount of tonnage of crabs that were allowed to be taken because they were alarmed that nothing was being caught. These guys were working all day long trying to catch these crabs and not catching hardly anything. You guys, that's alarming. Down 90% is alarming. Where did they go? Where did they go? It went from 45 million pounds down to 5.5 million pounds. And they couldn't even catch that. This was the allowable harvest. So something's going on up there in Alaska in the Bering Sea. Now, there are different theories as to what happened. They don't know. They want to blame, blame global warming. But also, they're saying, where did the crabs go? Did they go over to the Russian side? Who knows? I could see some mad scientists rushing over there with some kind of uh, new invention where he sends out a signal on the sea floor that draws the crabs all over to the, to the to the Russian border. You know, they're probably all over there just stacked up and we should see what's going on with uh, with Russian the Russian catches of crabs because if they're up 90 percent and we're down 90 percent, then I think we pretty much know what happened, right? But look at all the tonnage of seafood being pulled out of the oceans. And this is just goes to show that these people at the top don't give a lick about the environment and preserving creation. Because if they did, then we wouldn't have entire species wiped out and going extinct. 
and they would never ever allow this kind of exploitation of the ocean the, the way that they do. Now, should some harvest of the ocean be allowed? Absolutely. But we're to the point now where pretty much they're just taking everything out of the ocean with these commercial fisheries. So, as we speak, they're allowing the transportation of super polluting bunker ships across the ocean, killing sea life, causing asthma to anyone who lives in these shipping lanes. So they don't really care about the environment. Because if they did, they wouldn't be trying to globalize. You see, globalization comes with trade, doesn't it? And some people can say, oh, well, trade is great. It helps us grow. Well, usually trade happens at the expense of one country over the other, doesn't it? Usually they're leveraging some kind of currency imbalance and getting over on the other country who thinks that they're going to make all this money doing it, but in actuality, they're being taken advantage of. And then, to top it off, you've got transportation of all these goods, polluting the air and the ocean much, much more than the cars that we drive around. So, is globalization really a good thing? Of course not. You know, humanity wasn't meant to be global. We're meant to be in regions and trade within our regions. Not trading across borders, unless it's right next to you, but not across vast stretches of ocean. Last I checked, we still do a lot of trade with China, don't we? Despite uh, the demonization of China. So this is pretty much the Cliff Notes version of what's going on with this snow crab. Now I love snow crab. But I don't want to see what's happening happen. And I'd much rather, like I said, I'd rather take a trip to Alaska, just eat a bunch of snow crab, and then come home. Then go buy it in a store, you know, and have all of the waste and threaten the species of the snow, snow crab. Now, let's get on to this next story. Because while certain species are threatened with extinction, scientists are now saying that they can resurrect them. Look at this. Now, they've been talking about this for a long time, but they've failed, for the most part, to do it on a consistent basis, or so they say. Well, now, all of a sudden, they're saying that they plan to resurrect the Tasmanian tiger. And how are they going to do this? With gene editing. And people think we're crazy when we talk about resurrected pharaohs walking among us and ruling over us but yet it's completely within the realm of possibility a group of scientists last week announced a plan to resurrect the tasmanian tiger a coyote-like marsupial that has been extinct for nearly a century using state-of-the-art gene editing technology the goal researchers say is to eventually reintroduce the creature back into the australian wilderness oh nothing could go wrong there <laughs> Are you serious? We're going to have one-eyed, one-horned Tasmanian tigers running around. Genetic engineering gone wrong. Chimeras. I mean, there, there's a million things that could go wrong with this. These people are trying to play God. So they're saying it roamed as the apex predator before being hunted into extinction. To achieve, to achieve this, scientists plan to splice genetic material from old Tasmanian tigers with the DNA with the DNA of its closest living relative, a mouse-sized marsupial called a dunat. Been there, done that, to create a new animal nearly identical to its long dead ancestor. The project is a collaboration between Australian researchers and U.S.-based company called Colossal Biosciences. They're going to bring back the woolly mammoth. Too. Look at this. As difficult as reviving the Tasmanian tiger might be, the mammoth presents even larger challenges. Been extinct for 4,000 years, meaning there is even less genetic material available to work with. Wow. So, this is what's going on, you guys. Resurrecting ancient animals and probably ancient people, too. There's no reason why they wouldn't be able to do this. And so, there you go. Now, 
Here's our last story. This is actually kind of funny. And then I'll be back in the chat with you. Because, wait a minute. I thought nothing could escape a black hole, right? But apparently, sound does. At least in 2022. Listen to this space propaganda. Huffington Post. NASA released the sound of a black hole. That's creepy as hell. Look at this. Let's listen to this. Sounds like a scary movie. <laughs> I'm shocked they didn't try to like slow it down to make it sound like the sound was trying to escape the black hole but didn't quite make it out. I mean, they really think we're stupid, don't they? For our entire lives, they told us nothing escapes a black hole, not even light. But for some reason, all of a sudden, sound now can escape black holes. So, anyway, <laughs> tomorrow's show is going to be off the rails, you guys. Because we're going to be looking at the film Nope. Let's pull this up here. Jordan Peele. This was a highly anticipated film, science fiction, Jordan Pill. I think he did Us as well, which was about basically doppelgangers living underground. We decoded that. But look at this. There's black horses, white horses, portals, electromagnetic fields, flying jellyfish. Giant eyes in the sky. I mean, this is crazy. Now, this was a pretty lame film. I didn't really particularly enjoy decoding it. But we are going to decode it tomorrow because it's full of symbolism, of course. And it's full of specific symbolism about much of the things that we have already talked about. Here's a screenshot from the film. Here's the jellyfish-looking creature in the sky. It looks like an eye with an iris in the middle. And it eats people, pretty much. If you look at it, it was done by Monkey Paw Productions, which is Monkey Pox, of course, before Monkey Pox was even a thing when this was done filming. So they're obviously programming us. And in the film, some crazed monkey murders an entire crew of people doing a TV show live after he's affected by electromagnetic frequencies. So you think that might relate? somehow into everything that's going on right now i think it probably does anyway let's go back into the chat here see what you guys are up to wow yes the horseshoe crab blood the hemocyanin based blood now someone mentioned about these jellyfish having a certain substance luciferase that causes them to glow and change colors and you're absolutely right and that actually fits into tomorrow's show as well there's also a lot of blue blood connection in the in the film as well and we'll try to get into but uh crazy times we're living in so i'm interested to hear your thoughts on today's show thanks for showing up hetty Yes, Plane Drifter. Kate Bush, Cloud Busting. Yeah, it started a little bit early today. I think I was 15 minutes early today. Sorry, guys. Yep, there you go, Gene. Lucifer Race. There you go. It's all hiding in plain sight. Now, someone was... We were talking about trains. I want to talk a little bit about trains. Because trains basically are metaphor... For the serpent. Now it's in a lot of different ways. Not just the fact that a train track snakes around. Often connects with itself like an Ouroboros. But think of the word rail. What is rail backwards? Let's see who gets it first. That's a pretty simple one. We haven't done our Q&A thing in a while have we? What's rail backwards? Let's see who gets it first. All right. Now, I don't know how this works. I, I believe that the Eng English language was crafted, actually, to encode 
some of the these things. Yes, D's got it. Yes, it's a liar. Who is the first liar? We all know the serpent himself. So I think that they use these words in the reverse form to encode a lot of what the truth is about some of this stuff, right? And this isn't the only instance where we find these reverse truths in the English language. It's actually pretty prominent throughout. I try to share a lot of it with you during these shows and also in the chat when I'm chatting with you guys. I'll spell things backwards so you can see how the cat the spell casting works. So monkey pod equals 123 says decoder ring. Training liars, yes, Daryl. Split tongue Babylonian language. Locomotive of the inner foot. Okay. We've been railroaded. Yep, absolutely. Yep, he was a liar from the beginning, wasn't he? Palindromes. The trains are Yakum and Boaz. Oh, why is Chinese food always in films? Well, that had to have been the clue about Vidco 19. I mean, that's the only thing I could chalk it up to. Because remember, every time this shows up, they're always talking about, you know, some kind of being poked with something, aren't they? Or some kind of virus. That's when we see it. For instance, in Spider-Man 3, Venom. Venom infecting people, right? Pan's pipes, which are the hypodermic needles. That's why the Chinese food kept showing up in there. That's what I believe it is. And now it could go deeper than that. <clears throat> but this is where they're telling us this came from, didn't they? Except the movie came out in 2007. All right. Good morning, Teresa. Good morning, everybody. All right. China owns a lot of Hollywood, says Elizabeth. Okay. Hmm. Venom is women upside down. Locomotive breadth. Remember, we decoded the film um, The Polar Express. Remember that? I had to pull that one down. You guys, we were finding all kinds of stuff in these animated films. Polar Express, uh, Toy Story franchise. I really wish we had access to those videos. I don't even think I saved a lot of them. Because they were really coming at us hard with trying to take channels down. Because of these decodes. Which is so hypocritical. You would think that they would want these people exposed. But instead, it was a giant cover up. They wanted to erase the body of evidence that proves that there was, at the least, inappropriate subliminal innuendo and messaging throughout these animated films, which we all sent our children to go watch. We found it everywhere. Polar Express was particularly bad because you had Hom tanks with the children on the train. And we were putting, you know, showing clips in slow motion with all kinds of stuff we found. We found. All right. So, fortunately, you're not allowed to play any of that on YouTube anymore. Yes, Polar Express was key to everything. Remember, that was about portals, wasn't it? They went into this fantasy world. Polar Express. That's the serpent. Who was at the head of the serpent? Palm tanks. All right. Now, I guess we'll call it a day today. I don't really know if there's much else to talk about today. We'll be back on her tomorrow with the decode that I promised you guys from the film Nope. I love each and every one of you guys. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Take care and be safe.